Hey there friends, today I want to talk about a very important issue and that is when to stop with a task. In research, when is something good enough? Now many of the tasks we do in science and research are by their very nature pretty open-ended. That means you can always put more time in something. For example, you can always keep polishing a manuscript. You can always get into greater detail in your literature research. You can always make your lecture better. You can always make your seminar and your teaching better. I mean, it, it just... <laughs> Science is full of these tasks where you can put basically limitless amounts of energy into them. So the question really becomes, when should you stop? Now, this is an incredibly important question, but also a very difficult one to answer. It is also a problem about which I think a lot and Maybe there's no definitive answer, but in this video I want to share some thoughts on this. In the end, this is going to also be a very individual decision that depends on your personality. Like, for example, if you are inherently a perfectionist, you will find it much more difficult to complete and finish tasks. But no matter your personality, it is important to finish up tasks, otherwise you just won't make progress. Now, one of the most important insights in terms of finishing projects is in every project, over time, there are going to be diminishing returns. What does that mean? Well, that means that as you progress with your project over time, the same amount of effort that you put in, if you could measure that, will no longer yield the same amount of success or output as it did in the beginning when you started the project. And so in every project there comes this point where you know <laughs> you put in more and more effort but this thing doesn't really get any better so it's this inclination point and this is the point where you really need to start thinking about finishing this up and moving on to the next project. Now you have likely heard of this before this is uh, sometimes called the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule which means that 80% of your output or your results come from 20% of the work you put in. This is just another way of saying that not all of your work pays off equally well, but that in the beginning of a project every effort yields more direct output than when it's more towards the end of the project, when there are really these diminishing returns. Well, this sounds great and there's also a lot of um, theoretical support for this 80-20 notion. Actually it comes originally from economics, but how does this really help you? Because you typically don't know where you are along this curve. This is almost impossible to know in the end, really. But this is where monitoring your progress can come in really handy. You can observe different phases of your work or different drafts of your paper, for example, and see how it progresses through time. Is this really getting objectively better? Or are you just wasting time on details that in the end don't really matter? Now, while it's important to sort of observe your progress over time in any project, don't overdo this monitoring, right? Just low-key keep an eye on how are you progressing here. And it's important to realize that other things can help you. And we're going to talk about these next. The most important thing in determining whether you should finish a project up is to get feedback. It can be feedback from your mentor um, if you're an early career researcher, or it can also be feedback from one of your peers or your trusted friends or your circle of buddies that you share things with. Sometimes it really is just difficult to judge where you are in a process, also because you come sort of blind to your own work and your own progress if you've worked on something for very, quite long. This is definitely something I experience. This very often happens in papers, like you really don't know is this getting any better now? And that is where a fresh outside perspective can really be invaluable. For example, these people can tell you, well, in this part of your paper, I really don't understand what you're talking about and you need to explain this bit more or this is really great. So no matter what the feedback is, at that point, everything is gonna be just really, really helpful compared to working on this just by yourself. Another thing that really works for me in addition to getting this outside feedback is to basically get feedback from your future self if you want. So this means taking a break, letting a project like sit for a couple days or a week or, or two weeks and then coming back to it having worked on something else in the meantime with a completely fresh mindset. And it is really astonishing how 
often this works well when you just look at something again with um, fresh eyes. This has definitely happened to me several times where um, I wasn't quite sure where to go with the text and then after I came back to it like a week or two later it was suddenly crystal clear how this should be done and all it needed was to just take a mental break from it and then reassess where you are along this project. Now, what can also help you are personal deadlines, especially for things where there isn't already a deadline that you have, like, you know, I have to get this lecture ready by tomorrow kind of thing, then a personal deadline doesn't help you. But when there are tasks, and they're often the case in PhDs and postdocs and later on, when they are basically open-ended and you could work on this for one year, two year, five years, then it's very important to set yourself a personal deadline, which is kind of an artificial deadline, uh, but it helps you sort of guide your effort. Now, there is an art to setting these artificial deadlines because if your artificial deadline causes you stress because simply you cannot achieve a reasonable product in that time, then it's no good. So set yourself a reasonable deadline. You know, when from your experience, you know, finishing this manuscript should take like somewhere between one or three months, then set it a deadline around this time. Also don't give yourself too much time to finish a project because you know projects have a, a habit of expanding with the time you you allot to them so you fill just time up with this project when in fact it could have been finished much sooner this is something i definitely also experience especially with tasks that i don't enjoy particularly a lot then i set myself a fairly tight deadline and then it is astonishing how, how fast you can actually get it done and have a reasonable product in the end. Now, this has been so far all about finishing and finishing in a reasonable amount of time. But you should realize that there is definitely something like finishing too early with something, where if you had just given this another day or two of work, it would have been still substantially better to put it over the top. This has also happened to me, admittedly, where, you know, for example, I get caught up in my bubble of excitement about something. I think like, oh, this is the greatest idea ever. I gotta write this up as quickly as I can and submit it. And then after you've submitted it, sometimes this happens. I think like, ah, oh, no. I mean, that could have used another day or two of thinking this through and making the transitions better or explaining the argument in a little bit better way. And so certainly you can also finish too early. So <laughs> even though most people's problem I think is going to be finishing too late or spending too much time on something, don't forget that the other problem exists as well. Now, another thought that comes to me when I think about finishing projects is that certainly not all tasks or projects or papers or things that I do have same value. So things come with different value. Like maybe this is going to be a really critical paper for me in my career because I find it super interesting. This is the way I want to go in the future or something. And then, you know, I would automatically spend more time on it to polish it to a better degree and make it as really as perfect as I can within reason. Nothing is ever going to be completely perfect. But that is in contrast to something that is just a, a solid piece of work that I'm still proud of, it's a good contribution, but that's gonna not change the trajectory of my career, for example. And so I think that everybody will have that. There's gonna be within a category, let's say manuscript writing, there's gonna be you know, different importance, different value to you of one manuscript compared to another manuscript, but this can also happen in between you know, different tasks. Let's say, let's say teaching and research, for example. And so I think that is also important to factor in <laughs> the equation. How much time do you give yourself for completing something that is not completely independent of what you're doing? And that is simply because it is impossible to put the same amount of love and effort into everything that you do. It's just simply not possible. So therefore, keep this in mind. But whatever you do, even if it's something that is super important to you, that has very high value, it is important to call it quits, to finish it off at some point, because there are enormous benefits with 
finishing things up. There are enormous psychological benefits of having achieved something and having completed something, having completed, having closed this case and just moving on to something else that you should not underestimate. Also, this finishing up leads to output, the stuff that other people can see. So a good project is a finished project and one finished project is worth more than 10 half finished projects because nobody will see them, right? So this is all about the output that you generate for others to see. And so therefore it's important to really finish things up. Now, a last thought I have about this is that you do seem to get better with time doing this. I mean, you don't get perfect as I've just explained. This is never going to be perfect. You're always going to make some mistakes in judgment, but on average, I believe that over time I have become better at that. I have become better at judging where I am along this curve. And if I spend like another day or two on this manuscript, will it really be worth it? Will it be really putting it over the top or not? This is something that comes with experience. And of course it comes with finishing things up before so you know what has worked. Which is, if you needed it, another argument for finishing things up. What this also means, though, is that in the beginning of your career as an early career researcher, PhD student, um, you cannot possibly know <laughs> how much effort is a reasonable effort to put into something. You know, I mean, how would you know that? I mean, you will rely by necessity much more on feedback from like your mentor or your fellow PhD students to help you in that judgment. Whereas later on, maybe you need less and less of this external input. So this also means don't expect too much <laughs> of you that you can already judge this perfectly when you're just starting out. So this is it. These are my thoughts on this topic. I think it's a very important topic. I think it's also important that you come up with your own answers to this and that you gather your own experience. And so good luck with finding the sweet spot when it's just perfect to finish this project up. I hope this video helped you a little bit with that and I'd also be quite curious about what your experience with this is. So please do let me know in the comments. So with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.